Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Tutorial Time. Today we're going to be getting into more of some of the advanced techniques of spackling. And this has to deal with some mesh tape stuff, uh, using different kind of spackling techniques, and uh, a couple things that you want to look for, especially when you're spackling uh, a little bit smarter than a little bit harder. So let's get into it. Andy Man. Okay, as you can see, there are a bunch of cracks and imperfections and stuff on the actual bench itself, and that is what I'm going to be taking care of first because it takes a long time to dry. Now, on the bigger cracks and bigger spaces, we didn't have any of this on the previous dining room episodes, but today we're going to handle it, and how we handle it is this stuff. This is a kind of uh, mesh tape. Uh, it's sticky on one side and then you basically put it down so that your spackling has something to hang on to and you can use as much as you want and this stuff is great. It's not perfect but I've used it on a bunch of different patches before and this stuff is awesome. I don't even know what kind of brand this is but it's good. Uh, so we're gonna mix everything, tape this up and uh, get started. Okay, so whenever you are putting down the mesh tape, the easiest thing to do to cut it, which I'm about to do right now, is use your putty knife, put it down, and rip. Just like that. It is the easiest way to cut your tape. One thing that I did want to mention um, about the taping, and just whenever you're spackling in general, especially a big area, is Try to spackle smarter and not harder. And what I mean by that is this entire bench is gonna be covered with a piece of wood. I'm not gonna spackle this whole thing. That would be completely pointless and just a waste of spackle. So I'm only gonna do the sides and the edging and that way that'll be the only part that's being seen. The only reason why I'm taping this stuff up and I'm gonna put a, a quick slab on it is because I wanna keep some of the structural integrity of it whenever the wood is actually on this bob piece. Now when you're taping down the corners, you want to try to get the tape in the middle of each of the two ends of the drywall. And then you want to push your finger right in the middle, just like I'm doing right there, to try to get it as close to the middle as possible. If it's not perfect, that's okay, as long as you have it so that it's touching both pieces of drywall. Now for larger areas, once I move my big head out of the way, so you can see it, yep, right there. Uh, for larger areas that need a little bit more love, a little bit more tape is not that big a deal. The mesh tape is not very thick and you're going to be putting on one skim coat right over top of it. So it's not even gonna show it anyway and it's not gonna make a difference. Love me some fresh goop. The stuff on the bottom doesn't need to be pretty. Again, this is just for structural stuff. I'm just trying to get it all on here so that it has a little more oomph. Repetition is not a bad thing and I'm about to repeat myself in a little bit, but I wanted to mention a skim coat over top of the mesh tape. You want to get a goop of it just over top of it so that it covers it and it's kind of like a sealant. And you don't really need to worry about what it looks like on this end because we're not going to see it because of the wood. Another technique is you could have the putty on the side of your knife and then pull afterwards. Now the idea with the, uh, with the tape is you want to get a good chunk on to cover the mesh and that's kind of like your skim coat just to get enough on there just so that it covers all of the mesh parts. Then you can get really nitty gritty and specific later. But the big stuff is key when you start. Big stuff is key. Spackle in my bench. Spackle in my bench. Some places you're gonna need a little bit more and a little more concentrated amounts, which is okay. Trial and error, tri tri trial and error. Now when you're trying to be a little bit more precise with your compound, sometimes going sideways or up and down 
is a crucial technique to get it smooth. Sometimes up and down doesn't work because you have imperfections in your tape. Sometimes sideways doesn't work because you have imperfections in your wall. Either way, a little bit of trial and error goes a long way here, especially when you're trying to get your surface to be nice and smooth around your tape. Like before, I was going sideways, but now I'm about to go up and down, and it actually worked out better in this situation. Now this is a more of a case-by-case -case basis, but what you need to understand is having different putty knives for different situations can help you out a lot in your project. For instance, me, I had to switch to a 2-inch knife because the space that I was working in did not accommodate a 4-inch knife or a 6-inch knife. Some of the sidewalls did, but not underneath the trim for the window. And changing it up in specific situations can help, but just have patience with yourself. Now, when you're puttying with a two inch knife, it can be very difficult, especially when the mesh tape that you use is also two inches. So be patient, take your time, and remember, you can fix the imperfections later with sanding. Sanding is a beautiful thing. You can sand the ever-loving crap out of it if it all doesn't work out as well as you'd hoped. There's probably an easier way to do this, but just as a good rule of thumb, if you are puttying by yourself and you are trying to figure out how to work the knife, try a couple different things out. I tried this paintbrush method and it seemed to work on this part, but I switched up the way that I was holding the knife just because it worked better in different situations and you should do the same thing. Switch it up, give it a couple tries, and remember you can always fix it later. Now watch for the different techniques, first sideways and now up and down. Depending on the situation, remember trying different things, especially when you're spackling on a skim coat, it can help. Last note about drying times. If you put on a lot of putty to get rid of some big imperfections, just know that it's gonna take a really long time to dry, so be patient with that. Hey guys, thanks for watching this latest episode of Tutorial Time. I, I hope these couple of quick tips, uh, specifically when working with mesh tape and a couple extra things, is going to help you on your next project. Um, if you have any requests on tutorials, leave them in the comments below. I would love to do a little bit of research and uh, help you guys out with a couple extra things. If it's related to something that I know, and if it's something that I don't know, we can learn it together. Uh, anyways, stay tuned. There will be more adventures from Handyman.